This is my Gibson SG Standard, which I got back in high school. As you can probably tell, it's in pretty pristine condition because I sadly never play it. This guitar doesn't even sit on my guitar rack. It literally stays in its case in the closet and it's been there since 2017. Now, with the re-emergence of the Gibson SG into mainstream guitar, I started thinking maybe there's something I'm missing. So I brought the guitar out of hibernation to find out, is a Gibson SG worth buying if you already have a Les Paul? Both the SG and Les Paul are are iconic rock and roll guitars, so a rock and roll test seems like a fitting start. I've kept all the effects and settings the same. The only variable I'm swapping out is the guitar. I thought both guitars sounded great here. There's some subtle differences, but overall, they both have that quintessential Gibson tone that we all know and love. The SG seemed to have maybe a little more low mid focus than the Les Paul, which made it super ratty with the fuzz. I thought it sounded insane with the rhythm chords and I think I actually preferred it to the sound of the Les Paul here. The solo comes in and it sounded great. Once again, that low mid focus made it a little smoother than the Les Paul, but it also gave it a sort of vintage flair. The Les Paul was bright and thick and this thing sounds mean with that fuzz. That extra high end adds a ton of attack and really like, oh, it grips you. My Les Paul has Burst Bucker Pros in it, which can be a little bit brighter than the standard humbuckers you see in Les Pauls. But even knowing that, I really thought the SG was gonna be the brighter guitar, but it's just clearly not. Now let's try something maybe a little less standard for a Les Paul and an SG. Let's do something clean and loungy.
Once again, both options sounded great to me, and just like before, the SG seems to be a darker version of the Les Paul. While the SG might be a little muddy on the chords, it definitely fits the mood, and I really like the added darkness on the solo. That smooth top end is really nice and dreamy. I love the SG here, and to be frank, the SG is probably one of the last guitars I would consider using for something vibey like this, so count me pleasantly surprised. The Les Paul was really bright and clear. I felt like I could hear my fingers moving across the fretboard a little more, and I could really hear the sound of the pick against the strings. It might be just a touch too bright for this setting, but pretty easily correctable. You could just roll the tone knob back a little bit or just do some post EQ work. Before we move on to the next test, I wanted to let all the Quad Cortex users know that all the tones you've heard and the tones you're about to hear are from the Quad Cortex utilizing my JM pedal board preset. If you like these tones and you want them for yourself, you can grab a copy of the preset through the link in the description. And for everyone else, I would majorly appreciate it if you drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps out a ton. I thought it would be cool to try something a little bit modern country with these guitars. I've noticed that the SG is starting to emerge amongst country guitarists as of late, so I'm curious to find out if the SG does in fact have a little bit of an advantage here. The results of this test seem pretty consistent with our last two. The SG offers a darker, warmer version of that Gibson tone, and the Les Paul seems to offer a brighter, clearer version. In this case, I prefer the sound of the Les Paul. I think the brightness really complements the genre. It seems a little more similar to that bright, twangy Telecaster sound you hear all the time in country. But the warmth of the SG is really nice, and that slightly darker sound makes it feel more retro, like I was recording on an old amp with an old guitar. I don't think you could go wrong with using either guitar here. Is an SG worth buying if you already have a Les Paul? To be honest, I'm not sure. Both guitars basically give you that same Gibson tone. They're just slightly different flavors of it, but that's just how it sounds to my ears. To you, it could be an earth shattering difference and maybe I'm just an idiot, I don't know. But I can't say this confidently. The guitar for you is the one you feel most comfortable playing on. I feel more comfortable playing the Les Paul. I love the shape of the neck. I have a lot of sentimental value with it and I have an emotional connection to that guitar. The SG neck is a lot bigger than the Les Paul. Not that that's bad, but it definitely takes me a little bit of an adjustment period. And I know this sounds funny, but I've never had the same emotional connection with the SG like I've had with the Les Paul. But I gotta be real, the SG sounds so much better than I remembered. It's a fantastic guitar. But what do you think? Do you need a Gibson Les Paul and an SG or just one or the other? Should I just sell the SG? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel before you head out and I will catch you next time. So since y'all keeping the Les Paul thinking the raccoons and all, I can have the Ugh, not this again, Bailey. No, you don't need it. Well, I think I'll start on a rock band, trash rock band.